Newsdesk Sunday Guardian Roundtable. Well, the election fever is in the air, the candidate lists have been announced, and also we are seeing various kind of poll narratives taking shape. Kejriwal has been arrested, the opposition is talking about the misuse of the ED, the government wants to talk about its schemes, the opposition is also raising the issue of electoral bonds, there is of course a whole lot of uh, back and forth that is going on, but are we seeing the lines of a definite narrative, the manifestos are yet to come out, what are the issues that the people, that the government, that the politicians are going to be taking to the people, that is something we're going to be discussing in the roundtable today, the art of narrative building, what narrative works and what the parties are going to be talking to us. Joining me on the show is Dilip Cherian, he's of course the best uh, master crafter in terms of narrative building, he's also an image guru and a political uh, commentator. I have Shubhrasta, political commentator and a columnist, and she also anchors her shows, uh, YouTube shows. But uh, Dilip, you know, you really, this is really your uh, scenario. You know, if you were to advise, say, should we begin with the opposition? Because they seem to be, you know, really all over the place. What is the one dominant theme they can take and corner the government on, in your view? I don't think the opposition has uh, um, the ability or the space to create what I would call a common narrative. Um, the, the sad thing is that most of them have still not realized that anti-Modiism is not a narrative. The third, the, 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 so there's no time uh, and they can't do it. Second, anti-Modi won't work. The third thing I think is that they need to recognize that this election needs to be made about regional forces and regional strengths rather than trying to attempt a kind of pan-India uh, you know, coalition picture. Uh, that is what the pan-India picture is what the BJP has already punctured. If you've seen that funny meme, which is already circulating of the various leaders wanting to be number one. I think that it is too late too little and too weak to have that kind of a narrative. Look at what the narrative on the other side is going to be. Or are we wanting to discuss that later? We'll discuss it later, what? but I just have a follow-up question. You are saying that if uh, the, the narrative should be regional, then should there be a narrative for every uh, state uh, rather than having one comprehensive narrative? I think so. For example, in one state, the narrative can easily be that, look, they are pillaging our forests for the interest of somebody who is an uh, 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 industrialist of a particular uh, group. So mm. there are narratives which can be done at a regional level. Orissa could have a completely different narrative because of the fact that we all know that Naveen Patnaik is going to play the Jagannath Puri uh, manifesto, as it were, rather than the Ram Mandir Manifesto. So I think that there are different possibilities regionally, and people are happy to see some kind of a narrative, and they don't necessarily want one pan-India narrative, which, as I said, it's anyway far too late now to do. Fair enough. We're also joined with by Tehseem Punawala. He's a political uh, commentator, analyst also. And uh, Tehseem, we were discussing narrative building. And, you know, Dilip, of course, we began with what kind of narrative the opposition should take to the people. I'm going to get Shubhrasta in first on this issue. Uh, Shubhrasta, what? Uh, let's look at the opposition's narrative. You know, we've seen them. They, uh, why can't electoral bonds be something they raise all over? Or as Dilip very correctly said, let each region take one issue to corner the government in that state. Because that's how, you know, the uh, each party has a different issue, uh, he very correctly pointed out. Uh, thank you, Priya. Thank you for inviting me to your show. I 100% agree with what Dilip said. Uh, look, India is too vast a country to have a grand alliance of sorts at the moment, uh, given the you know uh, paucity of time that we have at hand. Plus, the uh, opposition's house has not been in order for a very long time. We all recognize that, understand that, which is why perhaps they had to go for this uh, grand alliance in the very first place. Mm -hmm. Now, to get all these conflicting ideological parties together and accept a grand narrative for the country would be too, uh, too much of an expectation. The least and the best that the opposition could do is to craft regional strategies and regional narratives in every 
pocket of this country and it mm-hmm. would really work because at the end of the day the uh, mps who uh, who represent people in the parliament are mps who need to showcase local issues so why do you want to make electoral bond an issue when it might not be an issue say in tutikorin which mm-hmm. might not be an issue say in uh, you know in some far re- remote corner of orissa why do you need to do that um so i think i agree with dilip on that on that count and and priya if you remember i have been maintaining this ever since 2019 that the conversation the narrative war the conflict is no longer between modi versus xyz it's always modi versus regional parties it's not going to be any grand alliance it's not going to be congress it's going to be congress in certain states it's going to be uh, uh you know aid aia dmk in certain other states it's going to be uh, congress versus um, uh, supriya sulez ncp faction in some other case so let's accept that and move ahead okay so there's in here is the problem there is a diversity in the india alliance but there is also the problem of a consistency in terms of narrative building so uh, what you know if you were you know advising the opposition or is the are you still in the, you know the congress what what have you been telling the congress what are they you know what are they thinking about so um <laughs> what i have been uh, telling the congress unfortunately they haven't been listening is two things and i don't completely agree with the dilip i agree partially with the two issues number one you do need a national narrative to counter somebody like a bjp so there must be a national consistency across the country um it cannot be the main issue because there has to be regional issues local issues but you have to have one thing that you stand for for example economy we must stand for economy jobs these are national issues job loss is going to affect bihar it may affect bihar a lot more but is also a problem in maharashtra is also a problem in bangalore with the startup industry so we could have a national narrative of what the opposition will do versus what the bjp has done in the past days what i told the congress personally is the election should be 10 saal versus 10000 km 10 saal mein kya achieve kiya 10000 km mein kya dekha kya dikkat thi aur kya kari ki but it can't just be about the problems because problems everybody secondly there must be the regional uh, aspirations the regional issues the regional problems for example again bangalore faces a severe water crisis part of it is made up because of what the bjp has done that has to be an issue or there's a traffic crisis in 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 pune at the moment that can be addressed because the pune uh, the state city and the country is governed by the bjp so you must track out the local issues again with solutions it can't be modi kharab hai modi ko hatao see modi hatao can't be an issue the agenda must be how can i make priya's life better how can i make dilip's life better what did priya and dilip get in the past 10 years what will tehsin do so their life becomes better in the next 5 years how is it comparable but with local problems so if priya stays in 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 delhi pollution is a problem how will tehsin tackle pollution those must be specific issues so you have to have a mixture of both it can't be one versus the other the congress had a massive advantage after the victory in telangana in two states andhra and odisha in both these states the opposition the, the governing party and the opposition in andhra that is uh, chandrababu naidu was seen causing up to the beach in odisha it so far went as to almost form an alliance the congress could actually take the entire anti opposition Mm. they lost the opportunity so odisha and andhra could have been specific campaigns again very good campaigns about how they will stand up um, these are things that you have to do apart from that you have to cater to your vote bank in terms of now i don't want to divide people on religion or caste but you have to cater to the people who vote for you and explain to them why voting for you is beneficial so the vote does not spread because what the bjp does do very well for example in maharashtra it's done in bihar it's done is it splits up the opposition it splits up the opposition party shifts in it splits up it splits up ncp so you have to convince people why the vote of ncp that is going with say ajit pawar should not go with ajit pawar but stay with the congress the congress also lost one opportunity out here which i feel particularly in maharashtra of becoming the principal opposition party and calling the shots um despite being the largest party for example in maharashtra in opposition mm-hmm. shiv sena is trying to call the shots or congress leaders keep running to sharad pawar ji i'm not saying she's not going to a little later in terms of the coalition uh, politics but just the narrative 
okay yeah, uh, then, sorry yeah i'll bring you in also on this uh, you um, uh, you know your reaction to what uh, tehsim and surash have said and also uh, what should the government do you know one point i see made which i would like you to talk about is that it's not enough just attacking modi all the time you have to you know go beyond that now um i'm going to one take a moment of levity to uh, tell tehsim that uh, you know the only option the congress has is to stand with subrasta because you you unwittingly left her out of the people whose problems you were to be dealing with but that <laughs> aside that's such a joke uh, i think that you have a great point at uh, 10 years versus what i saw on 10000 kilometers is a great narrative but that must be kept as a personal rahul gandhi narrative and i think that he needs to be seen visibly in both the states that he walked through and the states that he was not able to pass through for whatever reasons i think this narrative will help uh shall i say ring fence his personal commentary the the tendency unfortunately for rahul is to do attacks on two things modi and the rss and i think that those narratives the people who are to be educated elections is not the best time to educate them you need to have outreach at other times of the year to do that so i think that a uh, a kind of if you're talking of employment that's a huge issue if you're talking of inflation that's a well hidden issue and if you're talking of what's happening on our borders that's an unknown issue if you want to bring these three to the four then all the parties have to have somewhat a similar narrative on these things and i think largely if you look at the india bloc they will not have major differences on this these three things so i think a narrative can be built on these it's only a matter of who calls for that narrative building and how much cooperation they exhibit if it is going to be some dunderhead from the congress who tries to impose this on those who are unwilling to have it imposed on it's not going to work if you have a smart cooperative and genial person from the from the main opposition party trying to give a commonality to a narrative without making it a common minimum program it will work Fair enough. Uh, so, Rasa, you you know you need uh, then uh, Dilip. I guess sorry, you you need a sutradhar kind of a person, right? Also, which is the uh, doesn't have. I, I, I told guess. you that we have, we have to eliminate them on the basis of their arrogance or their their impudence or their intransigence. So they have to be willing to give and take. So, Rata, your take on this, uh, on the opposition, you know, uh, I guess that means there is also a lack of a cohesive, uh, you know, we we spoke about the leadership in terms of prime ministerial phase, but even a leader keep the alliance together in terms of, you know, just uh, uh, as Tehsin was saying, whether it is alliance partners or narrative building. Um. So I think Priya that there are two ways in which alliances work. One is if you have a grand agenda that you want to chase, or the other is that you have a leader around whom uh, you know everybody would rally. The opposition lacks both at the moment. Now, why is this alliance? Why this alliance might have proved useful to the uh, to uh, to individual parties, especially the Congresses, if they would have micromanaged strategies, uh, you know, behind the curtains and ensured that everybody is placated. But right now, because of the because of the confusion within the ranks of the Congress leadership itself, nobody really knows. who is to be given a, a you know a prime voice within the congress sometimes it's priyanka sometimes it's rahul sometimes it's the combined might with the... it's not priyanka as uh, tehsim will tell us in a bit <laughs> yeah sorry uh, so so then this this confusion as i said leads to regional parties <clears throat> asserting their independence which they should because at the end of the day if you look at say west bengal for instance why should tm tmc cow down to uh, to a congress in delhi <clears throat> and and we can take go state by state to you know uh, enlist that now in that situation what do you do in that situation perhaps 4 5 year 4 uh, 5 months ago you should have started working on a grand narrative 
unfortunately that has also not worked out the democracy under attack narrative has completely been uh, you know blown to smithereens by uh, the uh, 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 democratic elections that we have in this country where by the way congress has also made certain headways in 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 a, in a few states as much as economy is an important issue as much as jobs should be a national conversation unfortunately these are not vote catching issues which is why none of the uh, political campaigns in the past have really broken through the economic gateways and made made a statement so then what are we left with we are left with cultural issues where uh, fortunately or unfortunately bjp has a complete tight hold you cannot touch culture in this country without giving credit to the bjp so the opposition is completely bereft of of that agenda so then what does the opposition look at you can't culture try a polite word for saying hindutva no not necessarily not necessarily i kept i keep saying this priya if if the bjp or the right wing the loosely that we call it wants to make for example mathura and uh, uh, you know the next uh, uh, the next hindutva issue why cannot uh, secular forces in this country come out and say that well ras khan was the greatest of uh, you know uh, prakrishna poets so let's have all the ras khans of 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 uh, of india <clears throat> today on one platform to sing pains to krishna that is not a hindutva agenda for sure in the pa common parlance that it is understood but will the opposition dare to do that these are these are very uh, interesting questions to look at but perhaps the Cong the opposition not just the congress does not have the uh, layered sagacity to look at things i i wouldn't confuse culture with with hindutva hindutva yes is a is an essential part of culture today but that's mm -hmm. not the only way in which one should look at indian culture in that sense does development issues win elections or is it emotion because this is what akhilesh yadav told me on the eve of the last assembly after the last results came and they lost he said that you know we were talking about uh, expressway and the metros they were talking about shamshan ghat and kabristan and i guess that what is what clicked with the people so tessin uh, come in on this one no i disagree with akhilesh yadav don't think the people of india uh don't understand what is important to them but let me first agree with shubhrashtra culture and hindu food different things i i do agree with this my mom's a practicing muslim every day she goes to she sits outside the temple she cleans the temple every day uh in fact uh, the first thing she gifted uh, my wife and i when we moved in was a ganesha so and she has ganesha every year at her house so no it's it's two separate things don't mix the two things up but look i'll tell you why we haven't set the narrative in september when we had that meeting at i hi the opposition and that india name came out bjp left um, a, a little rumor saying india's name would be changed to bharat we were reacting to it. we should have said whether it's india bharat whatever you name this great land of ours who are the women of manipur from india or bharat are the jobs going to be available in india bharat we should have stuck to our narrative when you play on the bjp's narrative the bjp will weigh you down and beat you with experience. you can never win there so therefore talk about your narrative and force the bjp to react rather than reacting on the bjp's narrative how does it matter to the common man whether the lion on top of the parliament is smiling or growling and then we say democracy is in threat see democracy yes i agree is being stifled yes for the opposition and in india but the common man absolute common man that poor man in bihar who is used to getting pushed around by a cop when he goes or by a you when he goes to a post office his life or her life is not significant change right so for him democracy is not under threat but ab uske ghar pe paisa aa raha hai so there is welfareism that's coming directly into his back account so this narrative of democracy and the threat is not building unless there is something absolutely affecting the common man yes it's affecting the opposition therefore we should have come up with a better narrative of how we can make that common man in bihar his or her life better so there are so much of tools to do it rather than attack rather than come up pro, speak about shakti or speak about something else which the bjp will encourage and 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 will pounce on why can't we come out and say okay if rahul ji makes a speech ai will convert that speech into 10 languages and will be and put it out immediately therefore that national narrative is going across the country agni veer is a national issue it's a massive issue army people are distraught with about attacking agni veer why can't we address that why can't we address the reform that are so badly required in ias i just believe you me today's officers they don't have the guts to speak but they are so distraught with what the government is doing particularly with what the seniors are doing why can't we address that 
Why can't we address how we will create new jobs and use technology as a medium to spread it? Because the BJP has media power. Yes, we agree. Yeah. Do we not have technology? Can't we use blockchain? Can't we not use AI? Right. But instead of doing that, what are we doing? He's gone in the dressing room. He's the lion is growling. Uh, this is it. We we are fighting on issues that the BJP wants us to fight on. If we fight on Shakti, the only winner is going to be BJP. Make right. no mistake. If we fight on jobs and creation of a better life, the only leader a winner will be the opposition. The BJP does not want to address these issues. All good points, Tessie. Don't personalize your fights. Mrs. Gandhi never named her opponents. Don't personalize fights. Don't name industrialists. Don't name kids of industrialists. It's not going to work. Good point, all. Uh, Dilip, uh, this point about what uh, you know, Tehsil said is the Congress A is being reactive, B are being reactive on the level playing field of the BJP. Why rake up issues like Shakti or you know fall into that trap rather than going with their own narrative? Sadly, that's because originality has been flung out of the window in the Congress Party headquarters. If there is one, the reason is that you are listening to a lot of people who are at a charitable level, best called weak-minded. You know, the, the leadership is far smarter and the one or two people who are entitled to the term leadership need to get more assertive, need to make sure that it is not the principle of carrying on with the characters who have survived around them. Like your book launch, which is coming up, I think the numbers of exits can't be always treated as, oh, I'm glad we got rid of some rubbish. Maybe some people needed to be cleansed. But aside from that, you need to look inwards and see what has worked in the past. And um, Tessin mentioned that the you know senior Mrs. Gandhi never used the names of her opponents because that was merely giving them more airtime at a time when airtime was scarce. I think that some of these techniques need to be brought in. You cannot play by the rules of um, of your of your principal uh, ruling party and expect to win against them. They have a far better machine. Mm. They have a far more convinced mass appeal. And three, they've got infinitely more resources to bludgeon you into submission. Fair enough. Shivrasta, your take on you know the way the opposition is handling. I think we'll have another conversation on the government's narrative. But uh, the thing about this being reactive, have you anything that the opposition has done which is in terms of agenda setting that you could see? You know, there are issues. They could have picked up electoral bonds, jobs, whole lot of them. Uh not just electoral bonds and jobs, any issue that the opposition uh, you know picked up. Uh, say, see, for example, farmers protest. Hmm. or the wrestlers protest for that matter. You can't have a narrative change every single day. It cannot be your, your core political message cannot be, uh, uh, you know, dependent upon how some pressure groups are reacting across the country. You have to have your own narrative. Please tell me one single narrative that the, that the opposition has picked up till date. It's none, which is why they are in the, in the, in the space they are in. Now, I would slightly uh, disagree with Dilip when he says that, you know, the government has so many uh, options today to sort of um, put you, un uh, you know, under a lot of pressure. Well, all governments in the past have had that. But the it's about the effective utilization of resources that are at your disposal, point number one. Point number two, it's also about having uh, that ideological and political clarity towards your aspiration. Now, looking at the state of affairs today, I don't even know if the Congress party ever had any, uh, you know, larger than life kind of a developmental or political aspiration. It was always about having, you know, that five-year plan that reflected not just in policy making but also politically. Look at how Mr. Modi or Amit Shahji talks when you, when, when you know, when they give, uh, uh, you, uh, you know, these speeches at conclaves and when they speech, when they give speeches among people, there are two different languages, languages which are at play. Also, the grammar is very yeah. Sorry, yeah. but you really short out of time. I want Tessim quickly yeah. to come in. Also, sorry, Subhashta, but she has a point in the communication part as well as the plan. 
Yeah, she it. does have a point. The, yes, she does have a point on that as well. The communication um, of the grand old party has been uh, horrendous to speak the least. They haven't set the agenda. And it's not about not having a level playing field. Yeah. With technology, you do have a level playing field. With AI coming in with so many other options, only if you want to explore it. But that, but but one thing that bothers me about the Grand Old Party, and I told you, I think on one of his shows, that it's going to get worse and it'll affect the Grand Old Party, is the trolling that the Grand Old Party started to do. Yes. Today, somebody tweeted me saying that one more, a very senior and a very prominent journalist, she's also a part. If everyone is a part, everyone is wrong, Maybe the problem is within us. Maybe we should reflect within us that why is everybody against us? I am not saying I'm not saying media wise it's a level playing field. I am not saying BJP is not striking democracy. I agree with all of it. But I'm saying in spite of all of this, we have to fight. I'll end with one thing and one question for your viewers and Dilip and Shubhrashtra to reflect on. Let's assume hypothetically 146 MPs of the BJP were kicked out and the Congress were kicked out. Assume. Okay, I'm sorry, Tessim, I have to cut you short. We're totally out of time, but I think this is a conversation we're going to have to come and pick up again. There are interesting issues that have been raised over here, narrative building, the way the Congress is carrying forth the narrative. It should not be reactive, set its own agenda, pick up issues that really hit the people instead of issues that you want to talk about. On that note, thank you so much, all of you, for this conversation and for watching the show. Thank you. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.